All right. In this video, we're going to talk about the two different types of metamorphism. So let's look at these in, in kind of their major metamorphic settings. First, we have contact metamorphism. This is metamorphism that occurs because uh, it is touching or near mass of uh, magma. This is a uh, Heat, of course, always important, but then heat reacted or hydrothermal fluids, these are going to be our two most important agents in contact metamorphism. The other type of metamorphism is called regional metamorphism. This is the metamorphism of a mountain building, of uh, plate tectonics, of differential stresses, right? Here we have forces, right? So pressure, right? And temperature, right? So here for contact metamorphism, we have heat and fluids. For regional metamorphism, we have heat and pressure as the important aspects. Let's look first at contact metamorphism, right? Again, dominant agents, heat and those chemically active fluids. This is going to result in what we call non-foliated metamorphic rocks, right? Hard rocks, but the size of this, this zone of metamorphism, which is known as an aerial, is going to be controlled by the size of the magma body, the bigger magma body, right? The more heat, the more, the larger of an areola or metamorphic zone you'll have, right? Uh, what the host rock is made of, the the, the rock that the metamorph or the, the the magma body intruded into, what is that made of, right? And then the availability of water, water of course being important to contact metamorphism, right? So looking here, here we see this kind of this purplish area around the magma chamber. This is going to be our areole or baked zone or, or, or zone of metamorphism, right? Of course, right up against that magma chamber, you're probably actually melting some of this rock back into an igneous rock. But just a little bit beyond that, you're going to get, of course, you know, the highest, most intense metamorphism. And as you go out, it'll just kind of grade back into, you know, unmetamorphosed. Uh, a rock. So we can see those, you know, this this aerial, this, this uh, metamorphic zone, not only around magma chambers, but also volcanic vents, dikes, sills, basically anywhere where it's in contact with, with hot magma, right? A couple different types of, of uh, non-foliated metamorphic rocks that we talk about. Marble, right? This is the, the rock is often used for countertops, or if you go to those ice cream places and they mix the, you know, cold stone or whatever the stone is actually marble, right? Uh, these are going to be made of calcite crystals. They're going to be uh, react to acid, just like any calcite crystal, but also going to be softer than glass, right? And then we're going to have quartzite. This is a metamorphic rock made from fused quartz grain. So sandstone turns into a quartzite. And this is going to be a, we already looked at that under a microscope, harder. And of course, quartz is harder than glass. So one easy way to tell these two apart is scratch them against glass, right? Now let's take a look at some regional metamorphism, right? The dominant metamorphic agents in this environment are going to be pressure and heat, heat always being most important, right? So when mountains form, rocks are going to be folded and squeezed. We get a con you know, compression or a convergent margin, right? Maybe we have a continental, continental convergent margin, and we're really forming mountains like the Himalayas, right? This is going to create foliated metamorphic rocks or rocks that are responding to that differential stress. Foliated metamorphic rocks have very distinct zones from low to high grades of metamorphism, right, which are reflected in, you know, how the minerals are lined up and change in there, how the texture looks, uh, and all that kind of good stuff, right? So let's start with a very classic here. Let's start with this, this parent rock shale, right? So in this shale, we got loosely packed mineral glanes, right? Low-grade metamorphism. We're going to get a rock that looks fairly similar to the original. So the, here we have slate from your old, you know, old school chalkboards, or if you have a, a pool table, still slate. These are going to be, you know, very tightly packed, now lined mica and mineral grains, right? So what you'll get here looks a lot like shale, but it's going to be a much denser, much harder uh, uh, rock, right? And you can notice that it'll still kind of peel into, you know, flat, planes kind of like shale and that's its foliation right at high grades of metamorphism metamorphism the rock is going to look very different kind of from the original rock so here we have a granite I'm technically granite diorite with all these randomly oriented minerals right we add a bunch of heat and pressure to this and we get a metamorphic rock known as nice g-n-e-i-s-s -S, right and this is kind of the end-all be-all of metamorphism uh if you go past nice you melt it and it becomes an igneous rock again 
Okay, so here we see deformed layers in, of segregated dark and light bands, right? Again, those mafic and and, not, and felsic minerals separating out from each other. We can even see that these bands have been folded secondarily and twisted up like that, right? Um, so here we get, you know, a very different looking rock from the parent. So this brings me to my favorite geology joke ever. Uh, it's nice, but don't take it for granted. So the very classic textbook example of increasing grades of metamorphism, we start with a piece of shale, right? The shale undergoes low grade metamorphism. It turns into a piece of slate, a metamorphic rock. A little more uh, heat and pressure, and we get what's known as a phyllite. Now, these are both low-grade metamorphic rocks. Right? In both cases, you can the you can see some sort of sense of alignment, but you cannot make out individual mineral gra mineral grains. They're microscopic, but they're still aligning. Right? Uh, on our, our our high end or our our, our um, you know um, more intense metamorphism, high-grade metamorphism, we get sh uh, schist. Right, schist is uh, you know almost a scaly or fish scaly looking. You can see the mineral grains now; they're all lined up, uh, facing right. And then the end all be all again of metamorphism, nice, where those bands are actually separating out into light and dark minerals. Right? So, low grade metamorphism, slate and phyllite; high grade metamorphism, schist and nice. And here we go kind of as we, we, we shove these this shale, let's say we start out here with a shale, right, undeformed, unmetamorphosed shale. As we squish this mountains up, so let's say this is, you know, the India and, and Asia colliding and forming the Himalayas, right, as we start to get into that, that, that squishy metamorphic zone, we'll get into slate, right? uh, even deeper into the mountains, we'll get into phyllite. Deep in the roots of the mountains, you'll finally have enough heat and pressure. We'll start to form schists. Even beyond that, gneisses, right, the most intense. And then you can see there's even a little bit past areas where we've gone past gneiss and remelted it into a magma, right? So again, let's summarize these changes in metamorphic rocks. Increasing density, right? Growth of larger crystals. Development of foliation, if you're talking regional metamorphism, right? And then transformation of low temperature minerals to stable high temperature minerals, right? So let's look at these different foliated textures. Um, so we can have different types of, of, of uh, a rock or slaty cleavage. This is where it can be easily split along a flat planar surface, right? That would also be known as, you know, slate or slaty cleavage. Phyllitic texture, we start to get you know, larger grains, but we still can't see them. Uh, they're still microscopic. It gets kind of a shiny, sometimes wavy luster to it. Schistosity, the rock has a very scaly appearance, aligned flakes of mica or other types of minerals, right? And then nisic texture, bands of ferromagnesian and non-ferromagnesian segregated out from each other, right? Very conveniently, these have names that match their, their foliation, right? Uh, so we have slate, right, or slaty cleavage, breaks into planes. Phyllitic texture's got that kind of sheen on it. Schistosity, you can see it kind of has a scaly appearance to those mineral grains. And then nisic texture where we get, you know, the, the separating out of those different ones, right? So here's some different common metamorphic rocks. Here we have marble, a nice phyllite and then a schist and this one has a bunch of these garnets in it remember garnets love to form dodecahedron so this is a garnet schist right? so again the names of these metamorphic rocks match their textures slate phyllite schist and then nice and again you go past nice and you end up again at an igneous rock right we can take and that's starting from shale. We can start from other places and we'll always end up at nice. So we can take a basalt or an andesite, an igneous rock, right? Turn that what we call a green schist and then eventually a nice, right? Or we can take rocks like granite and which are already pretty happy at high temperatures and pressures, take a little bit more temperature and pressure and we turn them into a nice, right? Next time we'll talk folks about